Okay, thanks Nancy. So I'd just like to start off by uh, saying uh, thank you for having me and also uh, thank you to Nancy for inviting me. And uh, secondly, congratulations on the absolutely fantastic organisation that you have here. I would have, uh, I'd have sold my mother to have an organisation like this at Monastic University. It's an uh, excellent initiative. So what I'm going to be doing is, um, first of all, is talk about the qualification, uh, sort of timeline of my career as it were and then talk about the selection and uh, finally talk about what the options are if you don't get selected because obviously I wasn't selected so there's other opportunities out there which uh, allow you to still make a flight in the near future. So my first, uh, I guess the uh, <laughs> reboot, okay, that's okay. So first time that I uh, made a conscious decision to uh, want to become an astronaut was uh, Apollo 17. So this is Apollo 17. Um, watching this on a black and white television set when I was eight years old. Uh, didn't, have, didn't have the right passport. I had as an, on a Norwegian citizenship uh, back then. And they don't, still don't have a manned uh, spaceflight program. It wouldn't have helped if I was a British citizen because I was, working in, I was living in uh, England at the time because they only, had it, only got a manned spaceflight program last year. Fortunately, my father's Canadian, and I ended up on a Canadian, on a Canadian passport. I didn't know that back then, but um, basically back in 1972, there weren't many options to be a, uh, an astronaut, but I thought, okay, well, it uh, looks, look, looks a cool thing to do, so uh, I'll try and uh, get as many qualifications as I can, because you never know what's going to happen uh, along the road. So my I'm going to split these uh, qualifications into uh, vocational and avocational. Um, did my first degree at uh, Northumberland University, 82 to 85, doing sports science. Decided to take a break from uh, academia, and um, some people take a year out. I took three and a half years out. I joined the uh, parachute regiment, it's the British parachute regiment, two para. Uh, 27 years, sorry, 27, 27 weeks basic training in Aldershot. A week after basic training, I uh, went uh, operational, went to Belize for six months, did jungle warfare training with the uh, Special Air Service, which is the elite uh, part of the British forces. Uh, Belize there, obviously spent a lot of time jumping out of the back of the Hercules, I did about 30 jumps, uh, some night jumps, also just jumped out of the back of a Chinook. Uh, six months in Belize was uh, probably one of the best times of my life actually, it was very, very cool what we did. We had uh, two Lynx helicopters in Holdfast Camp, which is uh, just near San Ignacio, near the border with uh, Guatemala and Belize. And we would be uh, inserted into the jungle for 10-day jungle patrols uh, every, every month. And after we got to, the, uh, after we got to know the pilots, uh, they allowed, allowed us to take a boogie box on board. And the uh, regimental theme for the parachute regiment is Ride of the Valkyrie by Wagner. And if, and if you know anything about Apocalypse Now, that's what they play when they go into uh, the, the DZ, where uh, Robert Duval is and playing playing as well as the, uh, the cowboy, right? So we used to play Ride of the Valkyrie going into the jungle, and it was very, very flat. For us, it was very, very cool because we were fashion regiment soldiers, and uh, we used to play that soundtrack day in, day out in, in the barracks at Holfast Camp. So we used to do jungle, jungle patrols, like I said before, jungle warfare training, survival training, uh, coming back from uh, Belize in 88, didn't have to wait too long before we went operational again, this time to Akamas Range in the north of Cyprus to do desert warfare training again with the SAS. So the SAS used to train us, uh, sometimes we'd have uh, people from Pathfinders, Pathfinders are the people who uh, do the halo, the high altitude low opening from 30,000, 35,000 feet. So they'd come along and uh, do some training. So we integrated with uh, these people on a regular basis, the Special Forces and the Pathfinders. So uh, jungle warfare training, desert warfare training, survival training, doesn't get better than that for uh, putting on the astronaut, astronaut resume. And, it's, and the jumps don't, uh, don't hurt either. So leaving uh, the parachute regiment in uh, 1990, I, uh, actually I'll explain the reason I left. I wanted to, do, uh, I wanted to go Pathfinders. Pathfinders that's, is, the, uh, is where you jump out the back of a Hercules at 30,000 feet on oxygen just because it's just a super cool thing to do. I mean, uh, that's, that's the reason most, most people go Pathfinders is because they want to jump out of a plane at 30 to 35,000 feet, because it's a rush. That's why you do, that's why you jump out of a plane, because it's a rush, it's a buzz, it's a good feeling. 
first year they wouldn't send me back to do the training because uh, do selection because I was in Belize and they won't send you back if you're operational. Second year I was in a TV series called Combat TV, which is a recruitment uh, TV series for the British Army. Uh, so they wouldn't let me do do it that do it then because of that. Third year I was training the junior powers in uh, Perbright. I think it was Perbright, yeah, in Surrey. Uh, and I was thinking, okay, well, I'm not going to be waiting year and year after year after year just to try and get this uh, training. So found out then that you can do it as a civilian, as long as you have your D license in the States, you can go down and uh, do a halo job uh, as a civilian. So I decided to uh, head up with the parachute regiment, uh, left, went to do my master's degree in medical science, specializing in sports and exercise science at Sheffield University. I su subsidized myself by uh, running 100k races in and around the world, it's a fair amount of prize money for a runner, not kind of compared to golf tennis, maybe winning two and a half, three, four, maybe five thousand dollars, plus appearance money, plus uh, bonus money for various times that you run. I mean, all expenses are paid if you're in the top 10, top, top 20. So I subsidized my uh, master's degree by winning races or placing well in, in races around the world. This is uh, one in Torla Vega in, near Santander in uh, Spain in 91, I think, 90, 90 or 91. So you have to run pretty fast around 6.35, 6.40 for 10K, to put that in perspective, that, that's every 10K in 39 minutes, back to back to back to back. So the marathon split time for your first marathon is around 2.35, 2.40, then you run another marathon in the same time, without a break, and then you run your last 10 miles in around an hour 10. So that gives you some sort of frame of reference as to how fast you have to run these things to, um, to place well or to win them. At the same time, I was doing uh, some civilian parachute training, my uh, AFFF course, uh, AFFF, uh, AFFF, uh, Accelerated Freefall. So I got my uh, civilian license as well as my uh, military. So I think I've done about, uh, about 30 military jumps and about uh, 50 civilian and about 78 jumps in total. After master's degree in 91, I also did the diving as well. So you have to have the diving right to be a good uh, astronaut candidate. So I did my first diving with uh, the British Tobacco Club back then in the 80s uh, and early 90s. It was like going to military boot camp for the British Tobacco Club uh, training. It was, it was pretty tough. It's not like Paddy is today. But one of the tests was to was an open water swim, 200 meters open water swim it, with all your gear in uh, I think five minutes. Then you had to tow somebody for five minutes. Uh, sorry, tow somebody for 200 meters with the, all their gear. So you have yourself with a BCD and the regulator and, and cylinder and everything else. You turn somebody else, uh, an unconscious diver, for 200 meters. Then, at the end of that exercise, you have to free dive. Uh, that's without your kit, just just your uh, weight belt and your neoprene uh, suit. You have to free dive down to I think it was seven meters, and give an OK sign to the instructor. So there's, there's a lot of uh, tough tests just to become a, a qualified scuba diver back then. Obviously, uh, I made the transition to Paddy. Uh, I think it was 92, 93. Uh, because they just had a more streamlined uh, training process and qualification process. So after the master's degree, worked at a pulmonary functional laboratory uh, in the East Riding on the northeast coast of England for a while. Did some teaching, didn't like that. And um, after winning the world championships in 95, the day after winning the world championships, I just went into my boss and handed him my resignation letter saying I've had enough of this, uh, goodbye, and uh, I'm, I'm going to be a professional athlete. So I got uh, corporate sponsorships with uh, Red Bull, Timex, Rally Bikes. They used to custom. They used to give me a new bike every year. Uh, that's one of the Rally Bikes up here. So they used to custom, used to go go down to the special products division. They'd customize my bike and give me a new one every year. Uh, interwoven web design. They used to sponsor me. Zoot clothing. If any of your triathletes you'll come across Zoot clothing. Uh, they used to sponsor me for product and uh, and money. Because this is the only other job that I ever wanted to do. With two jobs, astronaut, professional athlete, anything else I didn't really care about. So this is one dream fulfilled, is uh, being a professional athlete. So I've been this for quite a few years. You might be wondering why I'm doing these crazy distances. Well, when I did my first degree as in sports science, um, I was lucky enough to have uh, Steve Cram on my course. Steve Cram was the world champion, European champion, Commonwealth champion, and he'd broken so many world records, I, can't keep I couldn't keep track of them. But he was a he was one of the greatest athletes in, in Britain at the time. And so exercise physiologists wanted to test him, but 